Good afternoon YouTube, my name is Brandon and today we've got a scrap metal welding project that should be a lot of fun. It's going to help turn my backyard from this into this. If you want to see how I did that, stick around. What's going on guys? So I've got this area on my property that I want to straighten out. As you can see it's uh, it doesn't have any grass on it. It's kind of lumpy uh, and it's uneven. I need to, to scratch all this, um, you know, land up so that I can loosen up the soil and then plant grass seed. Well, my thoughts are is to build something that has some tines on it that I can drag along behind the tractor. And then I want to be able to flip it over after I get the soil all loosened up and then it'll kind of like level it and flatten it out. So it needs to have some sort of blade. So then I can seed this area and, uh, and have a lawn back here. So let me show you uh, what it is I picked up off the scrap pile. And I think it's going to work out perfect for what we need to do. It's kind of almost fully built. Uh, so we got a good jump on it. Let me show you what I got. So I found this. Let me show you. It looks like it's made out of Schedule 40 uh, black iron pipe. And it's got these little hooks on it. And then it was just kind of like crudely cut off here. My thoughts are, I think what this was, and I could be wrong, but if you took this and flipped it around so that that is up, going horizontal, this looks like a clothesline to me. Well, we're going to turn it into something different. Let me show you. So my thoughts are we weld some short stubs or round dowel onto this, maybe every two or three inches. On the back side, we'll put a piece of angle that will work as a like scraper bar. And on this end, we'll fabricate up some type of hitch, maybe with a hole in it so that it'll fit over the ball, uh, like a trailer ball for the tractor. I think that this is going to work pretty decent. I'm not sure if we have to add weight, but let me show you what I got for material. So I've got a piece of bent up round rod. That looks to be like 5 8 uh, For the angle, I've got an old bed frame. And for the hitch material, I've got, I think it's going to be 3 8 might be half inch plate. And it's all bent up. And all of this stuff was free. I dug it off the uh, scrap pile. Let's get to building. So here I am, this is a good plasma cutter project just because I can burn through a lot of this stuff. Now I'm cutting off those hooks and they're approximately about two inches long because those hooks I'm gonna leave in place and those are actually gonna be uh, tines that are gonna dig into the ground. You'll see, you'll see as we get going but uh, those will be in addition to the ones that we put on. Now I'm just gouging off these rivets off this bed frame. This is going to be part of the uh, back side. It's going to be the scraper blade. And I'm just going at it, using the hammer, getting these uh, pieces separated. And for the other side, I'm just cutting it off to length. The plasma cutter makes a real, uh, real quick work of this, as you can see. Now, I've got a lot of paint on here, so I'm wearing a mask even though I'm outside just because I don't know what this paint is. It could be lead-based paint. And the plasma cutter, like I said, was not working past 35 amps to make a nice smooth cut on that rod, so I brought it to the shop and just using the portable bandsaw to cut it up. And you guys will probably recognize that skillet. That's been in a couple of videos. I try to do all my prep work that I can first so that I'm doing steps at a time. This is going to be part of the hitch uh, piece, but whenever I do something, I like to try to get all the processes done in a row. So get all my layout done, then do all my fabrication of my pieces, uh, then do all my fit up, and then do all my welding. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. Now, this plate would be perfect to cut with a plasma cutter, but unfortunately, on 110 and this is half inch plate uh, I just kept tripping the breaker over and over and over again so I brought it into the workshop you'll see uh, on 220 volts at about 40 amps uh, it sawed through this like a knife through butter you'll see how easy uh, it went now here I am still on 110 volts but I can do little short cuts like that but it will trip out so if you guys are looking to buy one of these plasma cutters just make sure that uh, you know you've got a dedicated 110 volt outlet I did not have one for this uh, in my garage but I do in my workshop 
Now I'm just torching out an area for the hitch. This will be a little more evident. And like I say, I like to try to do all my layout uh, and fabrication first. And that way when it comes time to welding, I'm kind of only just doing one process. I'm just assembling all the pieces that I've made and fabricated. Put any bevels on things that need to be beveled. Um, and you can see here I'm putting another gouge. That's actually going to be the hitch piece. This will make more sense uh, as we get going. But So now I'm laying out for a hole where this is actually going to uh, drop over like a ball hitch. Uh, you know, like a, like a Reese hitch on your vehicle. And here I am. Now I'm in the work shop and I'm on 220 volts and this thing cuts through this half inch plate like a knife through butter. When I pull this piece out you'll see how uh, smooth that cut is with very little uh, very little slag on it and that slag just knocks right off with a uh, with a hammer. So now I'm just using a uh, compass to kind of carry that rounded edge over. I, I don't really have to do this but um, it's more aesthetics than every, anything just to to get it to look a little bit better uh, you don't like I said you don't have to do it but it's just something that I wanted to do to to make it look a little bit better alright here we go now here I've got the Anson 205 now a viewer had asked if this welder will run a 6010 rod and most inverter welders won't I know that my Blue Demon will run uh, eighth inch 60 tens and it'll go down real low like 36 amps and still light it no problem I do not know if this welder will do it but we're certainly gonna find out this is a real good project for 6010 6011 you can see it's got uh, some paint on it it's got a little bit of rust now 6010 and 6011 rods are very similar 6010 is a DC only rod but like I said a lot of welders uh, won't run a 6010 the 6011 can be used on AC or DC so let's give it a whirl let's see how this thing runs a 6010 or if it'll even do it so I was actually quite surprised and happy to see that this welder will in fact run a 6010 rod like I said, not a lot of these inverter welders will run a 6010 rod, let alone uh, a welder at this price point and still run 6010. Now, is there an advantage of running 6010 over 6011? I don't know, is if there is or not. Um, 6011 you can run on both uh, DC or AC. Uh, this was just more for the test of being able to say yeah this welder can or can't run 6010 and it certainly can. If it couldn't run it uh, you could run 6011 and for me at least there really doesn't seem to be any difference in how it goes on, how you apply it. Uh, 6010, 6011, they're both excellent rods for what I'm doing right here. You can see it's got like a light film of rust uh, on those little tine pieces that we made and it's really good. It's a deep penetrating rod and it's a really good all-purpose, uh, general purpose rod for welding something that you just can't get uh, quite perfect. So now I'm flipping it over. I've got all those little tines welded on and I'm putting on that little back piece. Now that piece I found out really wasn't necessary. It was my thoughts that you would drag this along. Those tines would dig into the dirt. After the dirt was all loosened up, you would flip it over and run it on the, on the back side that I'm welding on now and that would like smooth everything out. Well, that really wasn't needed. Uh, the tines do dig in and they seem to dig in just enough and they fill in the low spots and they cut down the high spots and they just leave a nice uh, finish. I needed to add a little bit of extra weight so I put a couple logs on top of it and that worked out perfectly. Now here I'm running uh, some 7018 that way you can see the difference with how the 6010 runs and the 7018. They both run the rod really well. These are the kind of projects I really enjoy doing where I have a need that I need to do something and in this case it was uh, straighten out and flatten out my backyard and I picked up a bunch of material, got it all for free, cut up a bunch of stuff, um, put it all together, glued it up 
and then we get to try it all out and see how it works. I really like uh, this part of like building something, the creativity and the usefulness to it. Now, here we are. If you want to see how I built this hitch, and this is kind of one of the reasons why I built it the way I did. This is, can be used for all sorts of implements. It's also my bagger hitch. I'll put a link up above. You can see how I made that hitch. And we're going to be towing this drag around using what we refer to as the almost free tractor. Now, if you haven't seen that series, that looks like something that might interest you. I'll put a link up above now for that also. But uh, let's see how this thing works, and let's get to getting with it. Now, if you guys decide to build one of these, I want to caution you that as I drove along, uh, there were a couple spots where there were some stumps or uh, limbs that were buried underground, like roots, uh, and these tines caught onto it, and it kind of caught me off guard, and it literally stopped the tractor in its tracks and brought it up into like a 45-degree wheelie. So... Uh, that's a testament of how well uh, these tines held up and how good that 6010 rod actually uh, attached those tines to that. And you can see as I drive around, it's actually picking up a bunch of the little twigs and branches, and it's, um, it's doing a really good job. Yeah, this is working pretty awesome. Well, it's actually tearing up roots, and uh, let me flip it over. The tines seem to be holding up well too. I don't think they're bending, so. But yeah, I think it's gonna work better once uh, once it finally picks up all this brush, because I think the brush kind of like allows it to skate along. So once it gets through all the brush, then it'll just have the soil to dig into. I think it's gonna work pretty good, but I don't see any broken uh, or bent. None of the tines are bent. Yeah, it's working good. Look, it's even, uh, you know, busting out limbs and brush. So, yeah, this thing's working good. So, I'm going to just keep going and uh, get this all scraped up. And then, when it gets to the point that uh, it's time to flip it over and drag it, that'll be the position that you drag it in. So, let me keep going for a little bit longer and we'll come back to it. So after about an hour and a half or two hours approximately of just kind of riding around, pretty easy work, uh, I got my iced coffee, just chilling, uh, relaxing, and, uh, and enjoying the morning, uh, this is what we end up with. All right, so let's see how it held up. That worked out well, no breaks there. And let me flip it over so you guys can take a look at the tines. One of them broke, uh, one of them bent though. You can see it right that one right there but all in all worked out pretty good had no issues whatsoever and it really wasn't enough weight to dig into the soil so what I ended up doing is is um, I put a couple large blocks that I stacked right there on and I had the tines down I haven't even used the backside I haven't used it like you see it right now and I don't know as if it's necessary uh, I was thinking that it'd probably be handy but uh, those tines kind of pretty much drag everything. They, they take down the high spots and fill in all the low stuff. So yeah, worked out pretty awesome. What do you think? A little bit different than uh, when we started this morning, huh? And that's all there is to it. These are the kind of projects that I really like to do. Uh, the, all the materials were free and in the end result it's super rewarding because look what I ended up with. I have no money involved in it other than a little bit of time. Uh, we got to do some welding which for me is uh, enjoyable. I love doing it. And we ended up with a nice finished product that is going to make my backyard look so much better. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to find out what it is I'm working on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can click the links down below. You can follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. Book. Until next week, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Have a good day. Stay safe. See you next week. Bye.